this room. Come on, lift your voice, lift your faith, let it soar. He's ready, he's willing. Somebody let him do his work today. Come on, get out of your own mind, get out of your flesh. Come on, get in the spirit and let him do his will. Let him do his work today. Fill this place, fill this room today with your divine anointing, with your power, let us saturate us. God, we're hungry for more of you. God, we're thirsty for more of you. God, we're chasing after you. God, we're running to where you are today. Let your will be accomplished. Lift your hands all across the tabernacle and receive from him. Receive hope, sinner. Receive from Jesus. Come on, receive from him. Come on, King of glory, receive. King of glory. Today. Just want to be with you. Let that be a praise. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Now put your hands together and bless him. He's here. He's here. Somebody already has his attention today. He's here. Somebody's come with a made up mind today. He's here. Somebody's come to press. Somebody's come to put their way through. He's here today. Can I get a witness in this room? Come on. I feel like going on. Let the glory of the Lord surround you. Let him encamp around about this place. Let miracles and signs and wonders, let it be fulfilled in this place. To demonstrate yourself, show yourself strong. Somebody shout, yeah! Somebody shout, hallelujah! Put your hands together, give him high praise. Let the redeemed of the Lord praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Bless him. Honor him. Hallelujah! Give him praise, give him praise. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Pour your love on him today. Hallelujah. Are you ready to give him glory? I said, are you ready to give him glory? Hallelujah. I give you glory. I give you praise. Because my enemies. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. I said, are you ready to give him glory? Let's try that again. I give you glory. I give you praise. Cause my enemies. Yeah. Come on, let's do it again. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together all over this building. Hallelujah. Anybody ready to worship God in this place? Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it. One, two, one, two. Ready? See, I give you glory. Hey. I give you praise. Hey.
no matter my situation, no matter my circumstance, I've got it. I've got it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You say I've got trouble on every side, on my right, on my left. Now's your chance to use your hallelujah. Now's your chance to use I praise your name. Now's your chance to use your Holy Ghost. Come on and move that obstacle out of the way. Speak to the mountain and the mountain must move. Come on somebody, I feel Jesus in the house. He's under your feet. Lift up your head. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help coming from the Lord. There's victory in the house. Put your hands together one more time and bless him and honor him for it today. Bless him for it today. What a beautiful God we serve. Amen. Does somebody feel better in his presence? Is there somebody in this room just couldn't wait to get to his house, to get in his presence, to feel him, and to see what he has for us today? There's fresh bread. There's new wine. The table's spread. All we need to do is feast. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to Joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your name. That's our heart's prayer today. Sing it to him. Oh, 
together. He's here. Wow, he's here. He's here. With a smile on your face, would you find five or six people around you and greet them today? Thankful to be in the presence of God. Thankful to be at Hope Center today. We serve a beautiful God, a risen Savior. He's omnipotent and powerful in this place. Welcome to Hope Center Church. My name is Taronda, and we are so glad that you're here with us today. As you walked in, you should have received a guest bag. In that guest bag is a copy of our current What's Happening at Hope Center Church. For more information, you can visit our website. Also in the bag, you should have received a Connect card. This Connect card is our main way to link with you and find out how we can better serve you and your family. Once you have completed the card, you can return it to our guest center. If you did not receive a guest bag, don't worry. You can head on over to our guest center immediately following service to pick one up there. Again, we are so glad that you're here with us today. We would like to encourage every one of you to take just a moment to think about what your next step might be. No matter where we are in our walk with God, there is always more he has available for us. Would you like to know more about God's word and how it applies to your life and family? Have you been baptized in Jesus' name? Have you received the awesome gift of the Holy Ghost? Would you like to know more about these steps of faith and why they are for each and every one of us? As a member of the Hope Center Church family, have you joined one of our amazing ministry teams yet? We invite you to belong. Get plugged into Jesus and the church family. To believe, grow with us in worship, prayer, and the word. And become, discover your purpose, your gifts, and be all you can be in Christ. Please visit our Next Steps booth at the back of the sanctuary after service and find out what your next step is. Hello, Trini Ramos here with an exciting announcement for all the men. 
On Saturday, October the 5th, from 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m., the Pentecostals of Bastrop will be hosting the Hill Country Sectional Men's Conference, Men of Faith. It's going to be an exciting time of preaching of the Word of God, worship, and fellowship. Along with the $25 registration, there will also be served chicken and sausage gumbo immediately after service. For more details, please see Brother David Olet. You don't want to miss it. Just a quick reminder, on October the 6th, we will be having a very special service at 9 o'clock honoring Brother and Sister Bear for 60 plus years of ministry. You don't want to miss it. We're hosting an exciting event here at the Hope Center Church. On Friday and Saturday, October 18th and 19th, we will be hosting the Powerhouse Prayer Conference. The theme for this year's conference is Launch Out Into the Deep. Any of you ever wanted to go deeper in God? Here's your chance. Our pastor will be speaking along with Brother Jeremiah Sibley of the Jesus Christ Church of Castroville. There is no fee for the conference. Come and launch out with us for a good time in the Lord on Friday, October 18th at 7.30 p.m. and Saturday, October 19th at 9.30 a.m. I'll plan to see you there. Just a quick reminder that tonight at 6.30 here at the church, there will be a men's fellowship. You do not want to miss it. Let's stand together and give honor to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Would you just tilt your head back, close your eyes, and would you worship the King for a moment? Would you lift up your voice and praise Him? I love you, Jesus, today. I worship you, Jesus, today. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your compassion. I thank you for the ability and the power to forgive. Not just forgive any sin or one sin, but all sins. You are able to cleanse us, wash us, renew us. You are able to baptize us with Holy Ghost and fire. You're able, Lord, to raise the dead, cleanse a leper. You're able to make the lame walk, the blind to see. There is nothing too hard for you. You are able to break it. You're able to build it. You're able to manifest yourself in any way you deem possible. You are the Lord of all lords and the king of all kings. You are mighty, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. You are my all in all, my everything. I praise you, I worship you, I adore you, I magnify you. Would somebody help me praise him? Would somebody help me love him? Would somebody help me magnify him? You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we are able to ask or even think according to the power, according to the power, according to the power that worketh according to the power that worketh according to the power that worketh in us through us by us and in us in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every devil within a 20 mile radius is trembling right now they're not afraid of you and they're not afraid of me but they tremble at the name of jesus jesus Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. My, 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 turn to your neighbor and say he's been under oxygen. He's <laughs> been under oxygen. My, 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 God is good. I'm so glad that the Lord is here. And I'm so glad the Lord is there. I'm so glad the Lord is everywhere. Oh, my, different time zones, but God knows no zones. He is the zone. My, my, what a mighty God we serve, and what a wonderful crowd to be in the presence of the Lord today. I'm so glad I know who Jesus is. I'm so glad I know him in the power of his resurrection and fellowship of his sufferings. I'm glad I know him in suffering. 
No, you're nervous. You don't want to say amen, but you've been suffering anyway. You might as well say amen. Don't act like you haven't been going through anything. You've been going through stuff. You've had adversity from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. You've been down. You've been depressed. You've been going through it. Life is pushing down, but Jesus is pulling up. Now, power of the resurrection and fellowship of us up. They used to sing, He's been, I've been through enough to know He's still enough for me. I've been through enough to know I've never seen the righteous forsaken or His seed begging for bread. You might be down today, but you'll be up tomorrow. Somebody ought to go ahead and get up right now and thank God. If the devil could have killed me, I'd already be in the mortuary. If the devil could have killed me, I'd already be under the ground. If the devil could have taken me out, I'd already been done. But I'm still here. I'm still here in faith. I'm still here in worship. I'm still here in belief. I'm still here. No devil has been able to get me out. I'm still here. Tap your neighbor and say, we're still here. We might as well go ahead and worship. We're still here. We might as well go ahead and have victory. We're still here. We ought to, might as well dance. We're still here. Somebody ought to shout. We're still here. My, my, my. Well, the Lord is good. I guess you can be seated. You know, the fella standing for 10 or 15 minutes doesn't have mercy on those that want to sit down because he's standing the whole time anyway. And misery likes company, but when you're feeling what I'm feeling, there is no misery. Do you know why? Jesus Christ's mercy is, is the object. Our misery is the object of his mercy. When, when Jesus senses misery, mercy comes into the room. So if you came here hurting, Jesus is already looking for you. If you came here with hurts and pains and difficulty, mercy is just looking for you to cry out and say, Jesus, here I am. Because when your misery meets his mercy, there's going to be a manifestation of his glory and his power. God is wonderful. He's not the figment of our imagination. In fact, the biggest nation in the world is our imagination. If you can see God, how he really is, you can have victory over anything you're going through. I said the biggest nation in the world is the imagination. If I can get you to imagine that it's not just imagination and it's not just a figment of our imagination, but if I can get you to believe that Jesus Christ is here and you believe it, you can go home with a miracle. You can go home with a manifestation. I believe that there are creative miracles that will be made manifest in the next few uh, months because if you can believe it and you can think it, Jesus can perform it. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we have been able to ask or think. And we think God is just going to float into the room and give us a million dollars. He's not. The greatest nation of all is the imagination. He's going to put a thought in your mind. You're going you're gonna to work the thought that Jesus puts in you. And you're going to have a million plus, a million plus, a million. You don't have to believe it. You can go ahead and count your pennies. But somebody can step into another dimension. All you've got to do is expand your mind. And if God, God can give you a thought that can change the world. Somebody said, I wonder what he's going to preach today. If you haven't already noticed, I've been preaching since I've grabbed the mic. I've been preaching since I stepped up here. I wish somebody would let your mind go. Let your creative imagination. God, put a thought in somebody that can change the world. Here's what the Holy Ghost said. 
If, it, if your motive's not to make money and it's to make a difference in the world, I'll give it to you. If it's not to make money, but if it's to make a difference in somebody's life, I'll give you the song, I'll give you the book, I'll give you the dream. I'll put it through you. I'll put it in you. I'll give it to you. Somebody needs to loose your imagination. Give me a thought that can change the world. Give me a thought that can rescue somebody. Give me a thought that can rescue a marriage. Give me a thought that can rescue a child. Give me a thought that can cause somebody to think bigger than their circumstance, that can see higher than their level of thought, that can look into the future and say, I believe and I dream. Oh, my, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Whew. Raise your hands and thank the Lord for his word that is in this house today. Lord, I thank you today. I praise you today. I, I know the thoughts lately have scared you because you couldn't see yourself as a two-year-old Christian going to a foreign country to take the word, but we're living in a new day. We're living in a new hour where God will do a quick work. I never dreamed that God could take men that's only been preaching four or five or six years and put ministry and anointing upon them that is impacting men of 30 and 40 and 50 years. But God's doing a quick work. He's raising up men and women. And I'm thinking in our own house what God has done. God can come into a building. He can mark a man. He can mark a woman. He can mark a couple. And he'll say, you have no past, only a future. Now, do you want the future or do you want to live in your yesterday? Do you want the future? See, it doesn't matter what man says about you. But God may come right back here to this room and say, I need you, and I need you, and I need you, and I want you, and I desire you, and I need you. And you need not a qualifying committee. There's nobody that can line you up and say, you're not qualified because who God calls, he qualifies. He'll move you into the future without your yesterday. He'll move you into a new dimension that you don't even feel worthy of. He'll leave the Pharisee with not knowing what to say. He'll leave the Pharisee and the judge without not knowing what to do. If you're here in this building and you desire to be mightily used of God, I want you to step out of where you're at right now and come to this front. I want, I desire, I want to be used of God in ways that I had never even dreamed. I want to be used of God. Come to the altar now. Somebody may be saying, what about the altar? We're giving the first offering right now. We're offering ourselves. We give ourselves. I want to be mightily used of God. I, I desire, just raise your hands and make a funnel. There's no qualifying committee. There's nobody looking with a ruler to see whether or not you line up. I desire to be used of God. Raise your hands all over this building. In the name of the Lord right now, God, look upon this crowd. Raise up. Men and women, raise them up. Go ahead, raise your hands high. Let the Holy Ghost move. Let it flow. <laughs> oh, yabaha shikata yabaha. You have no past, only a future. Now move into the prophecy. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll be whatever you want me to be. I'll go wherever you want me to go. That's it. Make that declaration to God. I consecrate myself. I consecrate my life to you. I give you my everything. That's it. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you for using me. I thank you for breaking every fetter and every shackle. I thank you for putting an apostle's anointing. I thank you for giftings right now in the name of Jesus. Not a self-proclaimed prophet. Not a self-proclaimed apostle. Not a self-proclaimed evangelist. Not a self-proclaimed teacher. But one that you call. One that you anoint. One that you raise up in the name of the Lord, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Raise your hands all over the building. You're going to serve somebody. You're either going to serve Satan or you're going to serve the Lord. You're either going to serve Satan or you're going to serve the Lord. Jesus, I love you. I worship you. I want to be used by you. That's it. Go ahead, church. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'm pliable. I'm flexible. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'll teach Bible studies. If you'll teach Bible studies, raise your hands. I'll teach Bible studies. Anoint me. Anoint me to teach Bible studies. Anoint me to teach Bible studies. If you'll, you'll teach Bible studies, raise your hands. I'll teach Bible studies. Give me a Bible study this week, God. Give me a Bible study. Give me someone that I can share the truth of your word with. Oh, yes, the revival is here. The anointing is here. The power of God is here. Lay your hands on the one beside you. Pray one for another if it's appropriate. Lord, I thank you for using us. You see this body of believers that desires to be used by you. Use us, oh God, like we've never been used before. Use us, oh God, in Jesus' name. Use us today. Use us. Use us. Use us. Use us. That's it. Let the Holy Ghost flow. Use us. Lord, I know what I need to do. I know how I need to live. I know what I need to cease from doing in my life. I know what I must continue to do in my life. Give me ears to hear and let me do it. Let me move into the future. You can use anything, Lord. Use me. Oh, yes. Yes, I love you, Lord. You can use anything, Lord. Use me. Thank you, Jesus. You can use anything, Lord. Use me. Oh, yes. Take my hand, Lord. Take, Take my, my feet. Touch my heart. Speak through me. You can use anything, Lord. right now but we're 34 to 35 weeks away from Pentecost Sunday Pentecost Sunday is not only a, a holiday that people observe but it is a, an experience here at Hope Center Church for the last couple of years we have had 
well over a hundred received the Holy Ghost in the last two years. But we are believing that this coming year in 2020 that we will have over 100 receive it in one service. Over 100 will receive the Holy Ghost. And what we heard at General Conference <laughs> is we have witnessed for many, many years overseas thousands. In fact, this year, 8,000, 5,000, 10,000 in one service receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's overseas. But the Lord prophetically declared to our general conference that it's time that those winds blow in North America. And so... God wants to use you now. Now is the time to get a Bible study chart. Now is the time to go out into the field. The treasure is not in the house. The treasure is in the field. The treasure is in, in the home of a crack addict. The treasure is in a trailer house where children are being beat and molested. Did you hear what I'm saying? The treasure is in the field. It's in our city where gang members are. The treasure is in the field. We're not going in the clubs to witness, but when they come out, we're going to be ready to meet them. We're not going in the bars to teach them, but when they come out, we'll be ready to receive them. They're in our neighborhoods. They're in our subdivisions. And God is saying, the treasure is not in the house. We're trying to do evangelism in the house. But we don't need to be evangelized. We're already saved. But the treasure is in the field. He didn't die for us alone. He died for every drug addict in this city, for every prostitute in the city, for every marriage in this city, for every couple, for every alcoholic. Jesus died, and the treasure is not in this house. It's in the field. And when we get into the field, miracles are going to happen in the field. Miracles are going to happen in their home. Can I go ahead and prophesy? There, there, there's a couple that's going to be being taught a Bible study, and their baby is going to have a fever of about 103 and the Bible study teacher is going to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this baby. And that baby's not going to be healed at an altar area. That baby's going to be healed in the field. I'm telling you, Jesus wasn't looking for an ivory palace. He wasn't looking for a place. He would preach anywhere, anytime to anybody that would hear him. The greatest of miracles, you look at it in the New Testament, were done in the smallest of crowds. And it was done in homes. And it was done on the, on the side of the highway where a man like blind Bartimaeus was sat by the highway side begging. And while Jesus was going past the highway, when he heard the cry, have mercy on me. Jesus locked up and said, mercy is the reason I'm here. We're going to have miracles in our schools. We're going to have manifestations in our schools, in our junior highs and high schools. Teachers are going to be moved by P7 clubs when the word is given. Raise your hands one more time. I want to I wanna be used by you. Oh, God, I thank you today for what you're doing in this house, for how you're moving, for how you're healing, for how you're touching, for how you're saving. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing among us, how you are healing and helping. Thank you for your divine word. Thank you, Lord, for the move of the Holy Ghost. I love you and praise you today. I thank you, Lord, today. I thank you, Lord. You can use anything, Lord. Oh, yes, I love you, Lord, today.
One more time, pray for the one beside you. Sing, sing. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can use anything, Lord? Use me. Thank you, Lord. One more time, would you lift your hands and thank the Lord for his goodness, for his grace, and for his power? Oh, yes. For those of you who don't know what to teach, uh, we can get you a Exploring God's Word into his marvelous light. There are all kinds of Bible studies and uh, we'll be glad to, to try to get them for you. Make sure that you have them in your hands. You can purchase them and we will get them so you can purchase them through us uh, right here at the church. But how many of you would like an Exploring God's Word, a new chart uh, to start teaching? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Do you know how powerful that is right there? So <clears throat> we will order 30 tomorrow because I believe some others of you will want, want it and we'll go ahead and order the teacher's manual and uh, everything that goes with it and then you can pick it up here either uh, probably next Sunday to take that time that long to get in. But we want to put tools in your hands. We don't want anybody to say, you gave me a vision, you inspired me, but you put no tool in my hand. Now listen, let me go ahead and tell you. You're going to be asked questions that you don't know the answer to. But that, that's all right, because we can get them. If we have to, we'll call Brother Dr. David Bernard. We can get any answer you need just about on anything. We can tell you if it's legal. We can tell you if it's not legal. We can tell you anything you need to know. We can tell you. And so I am so thankful today. Whatever we need, God's going to give it to us. Uh, folks, do you believe with me that on Pentecost Sunday, that's May of 2020, that we can have over 100 receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? 100. And we will be ready. You know, if San Antonio had 1,000 natural births today and we have no maternity wards, we would be in a horrible position. There would be babies dying all over town. But we're not just going to see 100 be given new birth. We're going to have an army of people ready to receive those babies because many of them is going to be your Bible study students. And so here's what I don't want you to do. Just as you cannot rush, it takes nine months for a baby to get here. I want to tell you I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost right now as your shepherd. Don't rush the conversion because it will take care of itself just put the seed of truth inside of them just get truth inside of them and love them and create a loving environment create a safe environment create a safe environment I didn't say you couldn't bring them to church but protect them and walk with them and there is no telling here's what's going to happen we're going to have at least a hundred get the Holy Ghost from now to then You say, not possible. It is with this kind of army about to go out. It is with hands saying, I want to be used of God. Yes, it is. And they're going to be broke. Some of them's going to be like some of us. When we came to God, we're so broke we couldn't pay attention. And some of them is not going to be broke. 
on the outside. They're just going to be broke on the inside. Internally, they're a mess. Externally, they got more money than you could imagine. But they're broken to pieces on the inside. And God is going to give us a revival of rich and poor that come together, the word said. Calvary is a place where everybody can come and find equal status. Thank God. Would you lift your hands and thank him for his presence, for his holiness, for his righteousness. God bless you. You may be seated. Exploring God's Word, pick them up next Sunday, and we'll have charts. We don't apologize here for the moving and the interruption of the Holy Ghost. I do believe, having just gone to our 74th General Conference of the United Pentecostal Church, I must say, I do believe it was the greatest conference that I have ever attended in my entire life. I want to give honor to our leadership, Dr. David K. Bernard, and to Brother Scott Graham, our secretary, general secretary. I give honor to Paul Mooney and, and to all of the leadership that God has given to us. We have been very, very blessed in the United Pentecostal Church to have the leadership that we have. And I'm thankful for the leadership that God has given to us. I also appreciate Brother Stan Gleason. And these four men are doing an amazing, remarkable job of leading us into a greater dimension of revival. I heard it said many times at our general conference, the United Pentecostal Church has never been more united than what it is right now. And I believe that is because we have visionary leadership and they are sharing that vision with us. I'm very thankful to be a part of SGI, which Strategic Growth Initiative is indeed uh, the vision of our general superintendent. It has been embraced by our general board and uh, our chairman, of the Strategic Growth Initiative is Brother Jack Cunningham. And Brother Bernard chooses the individuals that he wants to steer uh, various committees. And he called us, had actually a secretary called us a couple months ago and said, would you uh, consider serving as a secretary of SGI? And I counted a very high, humbling and honorable uh, requests to be a part of such a noble team. We're talking about the vision of our general superintendent. And I was able to be a part of uh, five different events that we had uh, in regard to SGI. And uh, SGI is not a program. SGI is a vision. Programs are optional. You can either participate or not participate. Many programs people have put in their wastebasket and they wasn't, didn't partake. But visions are not optional. Visions is something that we will do. And the four points of, of the vision is very simple. Create a growth climate in every church in the United Pentecostal Church. And I can tell you that I have never seen growth and felt growth the vibrations of growth. And growth, my friend, is a culture. And the culture is growing in the United Pentecostal Church. And so that is the first vision. And then intentionally, strategically, with intention, looking at churches that might need assistance, might need help, might need uh, someone to come alongside of them and help them. It might be uh, taking a church that that's de uh, maybe a, 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 re a preacher that's near retirement or he's had sickness and needs a, a, a preacher to come alongside of him to encourage him and give him strength. And then it's multiplying the amount of ministers in our fellowship, seeing as many ministers. In fact, let me just tell you, if you desire a, a license with the United Pentecostal Church, 
uh, we would love to have you as a minister. Of course, there are requirements. There are things that you must go through. But we're in need of ministers in the United Pentecostal Church. And then the multiplication of, of, of churches. We believe that we're going to double the amount of churches in, in the next 10 years. We don't believe it's a program because programs are optional and they don't double anything. But we believe that there is a vision that is bigger than all of us and it is compelling us to move out and beyond our walls into the harvest field. It is harvest time. This is our day. This is our hour. This is the time of the first ripe grapes. I'm about to preach that to you in just a moment, but I feel it from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. We don't have to say revival is coming. Revival is already here. You are living in the day of harvest and in the day of opportunity. And I remember years ago the prophecy that was placed upon this church when I arrived Shortly after I arrived here, Brother Kenneth Haney, who was the general superintendent of our organization at that time, said, uh, by the nature of what you've inherited, there will be setbacks and there will be speed bumps. But in the process of time, you will be pastoring 2,000 plus on that loop in a new edifice. You're in the process of seeing that made right now. You are seeing prophecy Fulfilled. If we keep growing in the next six months like we're growing now, we will have to go to a third service on Sunday. I hope y'all are ready. I said if we keep growing like we're growing, we're going to have to have a third service. I hope you're ready. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is the time of first ripe grapes. God sending us preachers that can preach and we may need them in a third service. We may need them on a Tuesday night or a Thursday night. We may need them in a daughter work all across and around this area. Can I get a witness, somebody? Do you feel what I'm feeling? It's the time of first right grace. And you might have been gang banging three months ago, but God filled you with the Holy Ghost. Don't discredit yourself. God can raise you up and make a preacher out of you and take you back to the ghettos where you came from and be a preacher with a voice. Boy, I'm already preaching. Can you feel it right now? God can take you back to the hood and give you a revival that will shake hell. God can take you into the neighborhood, into your gated community, and turn it upside down with revival. Is there anybody in this house that believes it? You know what I've seen while I've been preaching today, and I've already started preaching? I see abused children. I see abused arms, burn marks with cigarettes. I've been having visions of it. Hold on, baby. There's an army coming to your neighborhood. Hold on, honey. There's a mother in Zion about to come to your house. There's a neighbor. Do you hear what I'm saying? Does anybody see it? A little girl that was molested last night is waiting for somebody to knock on the door and come to her house and rescue her and see her mother and her daddy filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm not getting very many amens, but something has to get a hold of us. Something has to get a hold of us. Arrest us, God. We're about to pray for those yet unborn, those, those babies who have not been born again yet. They represent adults and teenagers and children. I'm going to tell you, thank God for the knock that came on my door. We moved from Lafayette, Louisiana to Odessa, Texas. And in my heart, I was so afraid. I'd only had the Holy Ghost a few weeks. 
I was afraid to go to church. So I got caught in the trap, as many of us do. I didn't go for one month, and I didn't go for two months, and I didn't go for three months. But an evangelist at that time, by the name of Terry Pugh, came and knocked on our door. His mother just simply told him, Terry, there's a young man that moved into our community. I just feel like we need to go today. Would you go, honey, and just knock on his door and just invite him to church? Terry Pugh came that, that afternoon, knocked on the door, and he said, Are you, I'm looking for Nathan Scoggins. I said, I'm him. He said, our church is in great need of young men just like you. I have no tithe to give the, to the church. My parents were alcoholics. We lived in an apartment. I didn't have anything to offer anybody. But we're looking for people just like you. We need leaders like you in our church. Leaders. Would you let me pick you up Wednesday and come to the carpenter shop so that you can help us build the lives of other people? I need help myself. I need help myself. I don't know what to do myself. We need you to help us build the lives of other young people. Would you come and help us? All I needed was to be needed. All I needed was somebody to love me when I couldn't love my own self. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I make no apology for what I feel. I've been trying to take the offering for 12 minutes, but the Lord said, it's not money I want today. I want my people. I want them. I need them. If your life is a broken mess today, would you come and be a part of us and help us build the brokenness of other lives? Would you let God save you so that you can help save somebody else? Little did I know that when Terry Pugh would save me, he would save my stepdad from a 21-year addiction to alcohol. Little did I know when he would save me, he would save my mother. Little did I know he would save my half-sister and then my dad and then my stepmother. Little did I know that God would use me to save my entire family. And if Terry Pugh wouldn't have knocked that door, chances are I wouldn't have been there. So you know their faces. You know their names. You know who they are. Would you lift your hands and would you pray that God would help us to be in the right place at the right time with the right words to reach people that are hungry and thirsty. I love you, Jesus, today. I thank you, Jesus, today. That's it. Just stand your feet. I'm, you may be broken. You may be wounded. You may need God, your own self, but I invite you today. I want you to know that God can put you and build you. We want you here. We need you here. God will repair you here. You, you don't have to make an apology for your past. You just have to say, here's all of my mistakes. And I come to you today, Lord, saying, I want you. I need you. I want to be a part of building something in somebody else. Build me so I can build Heal me so I can heal. Deliver me so I can deliver. Help me so I can help. Heal me so I can reach. Pray, church, just a moment. Pray. Pray.
That's it. Travailers travail. Travailers, when Zion travailed, she brought forth. I want you to weep over your school, weep over your high school, weep over your college, weep over your junior high, weep, weep over your, your country of origin, weep, weep. In the name of Jesus. Stand with me all over the building. If you're here right now and you need a touch from Jesus Christ, you're broken, you're wounded. The Lord wants to touch you in a miraculous way. He wants to heal your hurt and restore you. He can heal backsliding. He can do it in a moment. If you're here, every head bowed, every eye closed, and you need to talk to him, would you raise your hands? I need to talk to him. I need to talk to him. That's more than 40 hands. Come talk to him right now. Come talk to him. Come talk to him. Come talk to him. Come right now. Come in boldness. Come right now. I need to talk to him. I need to be restored. I need to be mended. I need him. I need his presence. I need him to touch me. Come right now. Don't be afraid. I rebuke intimidation. I come against fear. Come right now. I need to talk to him. I want to be mightily used of God. I need him desperately in my life. I want to be used of God. I need him to forgive me. I need him to help me. I need him to restore me. Come quickly. Come quickly. Don't be afraid. I need a touch from the Lord today. I need him. Come right now. Don't be afraid. That's it. Pick up the pace and come. Come to him. Run to him. We can't keep living like this. We can't keep doing this. We've got to have help in our life. We've got to have a touch of the Holy Ghost. We, we can't keep on like this. But the Spirit of the Lord is here. I need altar workers. I need, I need elders. I need men of God. I need women of God. I need people that can pray. In the name of Jesus, I don't, it doesn't matter what the need is. God is going to touch you. By the power of the Holy Ghost, God is going to touch you. Raise your hands high. I need altar workers. I need helpers. The Lord will heal you. The Lord will minister to you. The Lord will touch you right now in the name of Jesus. You have no past, only a future. God can heal you. God can minister to you. The Lord still loves you more than you've ever dreamed.
make you a laborer in his kingdom. God's going to heal you, touch you, and feel you. In Jesus' name. from my yesterday as I move into the future. I'm going to move into your prophesied prophetic future. Sin, you're not keeping me. Devil, you don't own me. I am not your toy. I belong to Jesus. He that the Son is set free is free. Take dominion and authority over it in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Speak in that heavenly language. That's it. Let it flow. That's the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ. for your anointing. That's it. That's it. God's going to use me. God's going to use me. I'm being built to build. I'm being delivered to deliver. I'm being healed to heal. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going to heal somebody. I'm going to heal the broken places of their life. I'm going to take Jesus to their brokenness. to their emptiness. I'm going to take Jesus to their confusion. Go ahead, church. Cry out to him. The Holy Ghost is here. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Thank you, Jesus. Get all you need. Get all you need. Get all you need.
all of my Bible study teachers to join me on the platform. All my Bible study teachers that raise your hands, come and join me on the platform. I need all my Bible study teachers, hurry, quick, quickly. Join me on the platform. Bible study teachers, join me. If you raised your hands, you have to join me. If you didn't raise your hands, but you changed your mind, come and join me. I want to make sure that 30 charts is enough. If I need to, I'll buy 100. I just need to make sure. Now, those of you who have been praying, God, I want you to come, come close. Those of you who have been praying, come close. I want to minister to you just for a moment. Those of you who have been in the altar, come close. Bring them close. Those who have been praying, come on, ladies, come close, please. Come close. Come, come as close as you can. See, the old theology was you prove yourself to the church. You repent. You pray through. You prove to the church then you can have a Bible study chart. But, but listen, I feel something so deep and so powerful. For those of you who have prayed and prayed and been touched by Almighty God today, you have a right to join us on this platform. Because there's something about it when you start attempting to reach and help people who have been in the same position you have been, there is no greater student in that room than the teacher. And when I begin to teach Bible studies that I didn't even know how to teach, and I begin to tell my mother about Jesus and begin to tell my stepdad, and, and I was just doing my best to make it through I would go to church and I would start singing songs like, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart. Do whatever you have to do to win that soul through me and help me to do my part to win that soul to thee. And I would sing those old songs over and over and over and over. And then I'd go to my neighborhood and I'd knock on a door and I'd say, I want to invite you to church. And I'd go, I was the only kid in high school that had a New Testament Bible on his books and walked into my classes and they called me reverend <laughs> I didn't even know how to spell Jesus at that time they called me Rev, hey Rev but then it'd be like three months later, hey Rev my mom's dying of cancer, would you pray hey Rev my brother got killed my brother got shot, would you pray Rev I want to tell everybody who has been in this altar God is going to use you you are forgiven. You are released. I, I can see it. I can see God raising you up. But God, I'm not qualified. Oh, no, you can't say that when the God of heaven puts his grace and his mercy upon you. You are qualified to tell your story. I went to church. And the preacher didn't even get to preach. God interrupted. And I... I felt this drawing to come down to the front and I came down and God filled me and washed me and cleansed me. All you've got to do is tell your story of what Jesus did for you. Lord, I pray for a special anointing. Many of these don't even have people to teach yet, but I pray for a special anointing. You said, pray ye that the Lord of the harvest would send forth labors into his field. And God, we are sending forth these labors. They will go in anointing. They are being sent by this church to be ambassadors and Bible study teachers. Give them souls for their labor. Lead them to the hungry and to the broken and to the bruised. 
so that young people that are broken and bruised and wounded and who are tormented, persecuted, and defiled, that we can reach their mothers and their dads so that their life can be dramatically changed. I pray that you give us a burden to reach souls like we never have before. Help us to answer this call. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Would you just lift your hands all over the building one more time? There will be a time in our future where where there will be 100 Bible studies going on at one time. Where 100 Bible studies are being taught weekly. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. you. You may be seated for one minute. Just be seated for a moment. have just witnessed for those of you who are not or who do not commonly attend an apostolic church we do everything that we can in this church to follow the leadership and the anointing of almighty God there's nothing more important to us than following his leadership and as the pastor of this church I have felt that, that God wanted to do a special work here and I believe that he's done it the message that he gave me early this morning was that if you cover your sin and you don't allow him to have mercy upon your sin by confessing and forsaking then your sin will literally destroy you that's what he told me at 5 in the morning but if God allows your sin to be discovered and you confess and forsake your sin he will have mercy upon you because the Lord is not in the killing business He's in the saving business. So we're, we're not talk, talking about having your sin and Jesus too. We're talking about confessing and forsaking. And for those of you who Jesus allows life or situations to expose your sin, you can let it destroy you and continue to hide in it until you are totally a spiritual corpse and dead. Or you can confess your sin and turn your back on it. And what God has demonstrated today is I will give you a future that you don't even deserve if I can get you to turn your back on sin I will use you like you've never been used I will take you to a dimension you don't even you can't even fathom and imagine I can do things in you and through you but I heard it even at conference it's not have my cake and eat it too when it comes to sin but in times like this,
God doesn't say, I'm going to give you a future now, right now, for you to continue in your sin. Never. But if you'll confess, God, I have an addiction, and I need you to help me. And then you'll do everything you can to get the junk out of your house and get it out of your car and stop going to the places and being around the people that will help you go to hell. He said, I'll have mercy upon you. I will give you ministries. I will raise you. I will lift you. I will increase you. I will change your name from Saul to Paul. I'll take you from being a Christian killer to a Christian developer and maker. I'll make you brand. That's what we have felt in this place today. You have no past, only a future. You can go from where you were to being the soul winner for me. You can become apostle. You can become greatly used in my kingdom. For those of you who are hungry, physically, have no fear. I'm hungry too. It helps when the man preaching to you is hungry. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you really can have a future. You really can get over your yesterday. I mean, it may, it may mean, oh, I, some of you is about to get a nervous wreck. I've got to do a quick work so I can't go around the bush. I can't go around the bush. I'm running out of time. It may mean going home and, and taking ever how many ounces is in that bag and flushing it down the commode. It may mean taking your wine and putting it in the toilet. It might mean taking the bud that's never made you wiser and flushing it down the commode. It may be getting rid of your pipe. It is so quiet, I could hear a mouse licking eyes. So you have already gone from preaching to meddling. Do you want a future or do you want to maintain your past? It may mean getting rid of your junk, getting rid of your magazines, getting rid of your paraphernalia. It may mean cleaning up your house. In fact, one lady was on a 10-day water fast wanting to be like Jesus. And on the 10th day, the Lord spoke to her and said, you got to get the junk out of this house. She started ripping stuff out of the walls and started getting the Ouija boards out of the closet and started getting rid of all the junk in the house and put it out on the front porch and said, when I did that night, I heard this whirlwind. It was like, whoo said, but there wasn't any storm. It was just God getting the junk out of my house, out of my neighborhood, out of my life. See, I'm talking about somebody that can go from dealing drugs to dealing Jesus overnight. Somebody that can make an about face, put your back towards sin, and become a soul winner in your neighborhood. You're saying, man, I, you, you mean, I'm talking about an immediate transformation that only Jesus can do. And you don't have to give us the details of the last three years. And Well, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. If Jesus qualifies you, you're qualified. Somebody ought to stand up today. And say, I'm going to do what Jesus has called me to do. I'm going to become the man Jesus wants me to be. I'm going to be the woman. I'm going home and get rid of my junk.
You may have to get him out of your cell phone. Boy, I feel like preaching right now. You may have to get her out of your cell phone. You know what I'm saying? I've seen people get the Holy Ghost. And all their friends never had dope. Always mooching. Always needing somebody else's dope. But the day they got the Holy Ghost, all of them showed up with dope. Just like the devil. Let me tell you what's going to happen if you'll hear this preacher today and you'll repent from your backslidden condition and you'll get rid of your junk. When they come over, say, guys, if you'll just put the pot down for a moment, in the name of Jesus, I take dominion over your ungodly spirit that has come to break up my Holy Ghost party. I take dominion over you. (laughs) And when they get through passing out, Look, folks, they can't contend with the name of Jesus. So while you're standing in hopes that I'm going to quit, I'm about to quit. And let me tell you what else God showed me. Real quick. And be ye of good courage. Bring up the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. I don't know if you have noticed lately, but it's harvest time for the church. The reason why we called the laborers forth and anointed them, and the reason why God wants you to turn your back on your yesterday so you can walk in your prophetic future, is because it's the time of the first ripe grapes. It's harvest time. One more time before we leave. The the enemy wants the church to be watching the news more than it's listening to God. You better hear me. He wants you to, to, to listen to Fox News and CNN, and I'm not against watching the news or listening to the news but you can only listen to that garbage so much and then you get this hopeless despair that there's no hope in the world and there's no help in the world and God said this is the the greatest day the church has ever known stop listening to all of that puke get that out of your mind stop listening to the joint to the to the giants of opposition and to the voices of despair and no hope this is the day of opportunity this is the day of the first ripe grapes this is the day of miracles signs and wonders this is the day of the outpouring of the holy ghost This is the day of revival in North America. This is the day of revival in our school. There's hope in our land. There's help in our land. There's godly people in our land. Let me tell you real quick, and God help me to tell this story in closing and to say it right. There's godly people in our land. And they're in public school systems. There's apostolics in public school systems. So we were told that our baby was going to have to go to another school. And we had heard that there's a lot of violence and a lot of things there that were going on in the school that made us be concerned. But my daughter went to the nurse's station. And the nurse called and said, Reverend Scoggins, I knew I was safe when she said, this is sister (laughs) so-and-so. I didn't know she was a sister until she started talking. She said, your baby came in here with a 103 temperature. And they told me to get her to the emergency room right away. 
She said, but I just went on ahead and took her to Dr. Jesus. I laid my hands on your baby's head. I closed the door where the rest of them wouldn't know what was going on. She said, I knew you'd be all right. She said, I laid hands on that baby and her, her cheeks are just as cool as mine. Jesus just performed a miracle in this room. There's more apostolics than you can ever dream. There's more people. There's more of us than of them. I'm telling you, the church is more powerful, more anointed, more ready for revival. If you believe it, would you clap your hands and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let's worship him. Let's praise him. Let's adore him. Let's celebrate him. It's the day of the miraculous. It's the day of anointing. It's the day of outpouring. If you believe it's the day of miracle, will you clap your hands and shout? If you believe it's the day of revival, shout unto God. Oh my, are you happy? Well, you might not have beat the Baptist, but you're going to meet, beat somebody. I'm going to beat the devil anyway. Are you glad you came to church today? Ushers, come quickly. Ushers, come quickly. You thought we forgot, and we did, but ushers, come quickly. Thank God he just touched my mind. Just touch me right now. Uh, we can't leave without the offering. Not when the Lord's been so good to us. Lord, I thank you today for your demonstration and your power. I thank you for your anointing. And I do thank you that we are moving into another dimension of first ripe grapes. It's the former and the latter rain you said together. So we'll get the beginning and the end all in one. And I thank you, Lord, and that's true because there will be nations where it's a new beginning. There will be homes where it's a new beginning, where it's the first. There's about to be a mighty harvest, a first fruit. I thank you, God, for reaching into families that have never known this truth and win them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Anoint our soul winners and our laborers in the name of Jesus. What an awesome day this is. And if you believe it, will you clap your hands unto the Lord as the ushers come right now. You may be seated momentarily. Let's sing a song of victory.
to honor Brother and Sister Bear for Maggiano's. 12 tickets left for $50 if anybody wants them. 6.30 tonight, all men come for prayer and fellowship. Don't forget that. And uh, are you excited about what God has done today? Are you excited about what you feel in the Holy Ghost? Greet one another and be friendly in Jesus' name. Welcome all of our new guests. Let them know how much we love and appreciate them. May God bless you in Jesus' name is our prayer.